eyes and imagine this. A frail six-year-old boy looking through a garbage bag twice his size right outside of his home. The heat bubble formed by the pollution and close proximity of housing in a slum soaks his clothes with sweat in the 110 degree weather. As he breathes in the cheap liquor and carbon monoxide, he looks up and stares at my face. I look back into his eyes, visualizing the life he lives, one without any privilege or education. The story took place in Ahmedabad this past summer when I was volunteering for slums in Gujarat, a western part of India. I experienced many moments that confused me and made me think about the disparity between the greatest technological advances the world has ever seen and extreme poverty. I knew that we needed to connect this technology to the people that needed it the most. And so keeping this in mind, when I got back from India and returned to my school, I decided to make this bridge between the two worlds a reality. But it's also important to keep in mind that the scope of this problem goes far beyond the sweaty slums of Ahmedabad. With 45,000 people moving into mega cities like New Delhi and Tokyo every single day, by 2050, one in three people in the world will live in a city. That's an additional 2.5 billion people moving into mega cities within just the next 30 years. The problem is, these cities don't have the infrastructure or means to prepare for a mass influx of population at the moment. In fact, they can barely manage transportation or a sustainable food source. So clearly, we have a severe crisis on our hands. And our only solution is to retool and redesign these cities with smart initiatives, turning them into smart cities. So first, let me explain to you guys what a smart city really is. Simply put, smart cities are interactive communities of people and technologies. They can, this can range from almost anything. And to explain it a little better, let's use an analogy. Let's look at a smart city like a human body. They function a lot like them. So first, the lungs. Most smart cities have components that function exactly like the lungs. They clean the air, and they recycle the necessary components ne needed for good air quality. Let's take a look at a real life example of one of these, like Tokyo. Tokyo utilizes a wind mapping system to track the wind flowing between certain buildings in order to create some sort of wind map, right? And because Tokyo is such a um, concrete jungle filled with buildings of different shapes and sizes, the wind flow can actually be extremely different in certain areas, making it a necessary data point. So Tokyo utilizes this wind map to find the amount of airflow needed in order to reduce pollution and environmental heating. Tokyo has a pollution index of around 40, which is much lower than many other major cities of its kind. And this could be to other factors and initiatives, but clearly this initiative is working very well. And Tokyo is utilizing the lungs of its city to its benefit. Next, the veins and arteries. Most smart cities have some kind of veins and artery system, and it helps people to flow and transport in an efficient manner. This can be done with an efficient road structure, sustainable infrastructures, or some sort of smart parking initiative. We've all heard of LA and the traffic problem that they have in their city. Lots of traffic congestion. It takes so much time to just go a couple miles. City designers noticed this and decided that they had to find a solution. They realized that a lot of the traffic congestion in their city is actually um, contributed because a lot of cars tried to find parking and roam around blocks doing so. To solve this problem, they fitted up each parking space with certain sensors and actually implemented this data into an app. Within a few months, they realized that a lot of um, their traffic congestion problems faced a major decrease after releasing this app because now drivers could find open locations with ease. This is an example of a city using a smart initiative to solve a parking problem and then unclog the roads or arteries in their city. And now let's look at the brain central brain, one of the most important parts of almost any smart city. It allows, people, it allows cities to collect uh, data and other information through sensors and implement it to solve complex problems. So let's take a look at Tokyo. Once again, they have a, um, they have a solar tracking system. That's how you can put it. They track the way the sun actually um, casts shadows across their entire city. They can find the areas, they can analyze data and find the areas that have the maximum and minimum amount of shade. 
Now this is a very important technology. Um, it might not look so, but let's think about who could use this. For one, architects. They might want to find the area that has the max amount of shade if they're building some sort of park, because they don't want visitors to be under the hot sun at all times. It's a problem that a lot of us face. Or if environmentalists, they might want to build a solar panel farm. They want to put it in a place that gets the maximum amount of sunlight so that they can extract the maximum amount of solar energy. This collection and sharing of data has a name. It's known as the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things provides us with multiple benefits, and it gives us efficiency, automation, um, data collection, instant data access, and of course, cost reduction. Because we have sensors to allow us and advise us to um, utilize the optimal amount of energy and resources, we're, the IoT reduces costs for a lot of cities, which is very beneficial. So whether it be the activity-controlled streetlights in San Diego collecting data about uh, general pedestrian movements and traffic flow, or the real-time gunfire sensors placed in Atlanta uh, alerting cops in a perilous situation, data is changing people. And it's creating ideas that will save energy, reduce pollution, and of course heal the earth. Now, these are all amazing initiatives, forward-thinking steps that cities are taking. But it's important to consider what can we do to further this initiative? We all know that these are the steps that some of these cities are taking to make an equitable, near-future smart city, but not all of us have the money or resources to build our own cities, correct? So, I realize this too, but when reflecting back on the dire need for change and the natural destruction that I saw in India, I decided to find something. I was determined to find something. And that was when I landed on the topic of smart cities, or smart campuses, sorry. Smart campuses are a very emerging field, and a lot of universities such as Princeton and Harvard are all catching on to this initiative. They're basically campuses modeled after smart cities, and they utilize their campus resources and student body in order to um, explore, so first they analyze problems within the micro level, so at their own school, and they apply and relate these ideas to the macro level, so in the world. This unbelievable idea allows students to grapple with some of the world's biggest problems while making the world greener at the same time. To translate my interest into this initiative into a reality, I started small, at the local level, at the place where I call home. I started an organization called Smart Andover on my own campus in order to bring smart city technology onto my school's campus. My team tackled with technology such as hydroponics, civic engagement, sustainability, and of course, data publicization to change the way people on campus look at sustainability. Students notice that a spark is really all that is needed in order to get involved with environmentalism. And my wish is that every single student all across the nation and world finds the spark. So, whether it be helping people and educating them on recent candidates that are trying to find sustainable initiatives and educating them in your next election, or building your own smart campus, or maybe even taking a five minute shower, it's okay to take an exception once in a while. We can all do our part to create our very own spark. Smart cities are the future, so we can't be bystanders in this major transformation that is at our fingertips. We can all find solutions to make our way of life more sustainable, dignified, and lasting. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day.